right, so yeah. Hi everybody, I'm Jim, as you're well aware. And I'm Ryan, as you are hopefully aware. And we, that's, we say that because that's what we say at the beginning of the Concept Crucible podcast, which you can find links to, I don't know, here, 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 around. It's on the channel. Uh, we are not at home today. We are at Quartz Lab, uh, which is a local hacker space that I am part of and who is generally awesome. That's where you hold headshots from the heart, where you do all kinds of things, because today... You may have seen that we were building a shelf. I use the word building in sort of a really loose sense. Assembling? Building, well, no, I mean, yeah. we build, we're building. We may, I, I designed the shelf, yeah. and I we measured, and there was cutting. Yeah. You can occasionally hear the saws downstairs from other people building similar stuff. Yeah. Uh, Quartz Lab is a space where you can make pretty much anything. You do electronics, you can do computers, you can do robotics. We have people who do 3D printing and laser cutting. Uh, you know, woodworking, you name it, we, we do it. And there's even, I think in the background you can see the tex also, yes, textiles and whatnot. Textiles and sewing and no. paper craft and all kinds of cool stuff. No. But what I love about it is that it is about making stuff. Yeah. And, I mean, it, 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 it embodies that sort of maker culture. I don't really, I don't pretend to be an expert on maker culture. No. Uh, it's something that I just recently was exposed to, mostly through headshots, finding the old Quartz Lab location, mm. and when it moved, um, I was always aware of these things, but it was always tied up in cliquey groups and a lot of funding and whatnot. But uh, groups like Quartz Lab or any of the other hacker spaces opened my eyes to the idea that it's all it is. It's a community of people that pool their resources to try to make something. Yeah. So and Ryan, that's really all it is. Ryan, uh, earlier, was like, hey, I'd really like to make something. And I'm like, hey, do you want to come to Quartz Lab and make something? And he was like, hell yeah. So we came here and we made something. We're totally going to make something else later. Because mostly the, today was my shelf, but we're totally going to make a thing with you. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be rad. Because making things is rad. Yeah. I like making stuff, like like wood, and, and I built my computer desk a few months ago, and and I'm not super good at it, and by not super good, I mean not very good. <laughs> There's that ballad song. But uh, no, for me, it's it's about. Uh, it it makes me it makes me feel brave. I am I am a little nervous around tools because I don't really know how to use power, a lot of power tools, and they can be they can be very dangerous if used unsafely. But there's a lot of people here who are super helpful who have taught me how to use different things and once I know how to use it I can use it for all kinds of crazy cool stuff mostly for cutting squares um, laser cutter make, you know, make some cooler stuff with a laser cutter yeah we need more practice with cutting square stuff yes we're good at making templates yes we're very good at making templates we're yes, not we so are. good at making square things if you need a template <laughs> you should probably actually contact someone who professionally makes templates but yeah that is, like, I don't know that's what making is about for me Is it's not even like the having of stuff it's just Learning, learning something new and being sort of brave enough to try something new uh, that I don't know a lot about and that could potentially cut my fingers off. Uh, for me, making tends to be, it's tangentially related, but mine's more about capability or capacity. Uh, the, having the ability to be kind of self-sufficient and being able to do things. Not necessarily that you have to make everything, but being able to, to do stuff or to have tools in the reserve like in the mental toolbox to be able to fix problems so last year i learned how to change my own oil i uh, helped build a computer uh, this year my focus has been more on learning how to do um, a lot of baking stuff or uh, cooking so mm -hmm. for example i taught myself how to make bread uh, i've made three different kinds of soups the bread looks super delicious by the way it does well, it, on twitter it looks amazing <laughs> on twitter it looks great i haven't <laughs> actually had any yet yeah uh, and I've been focusing on a lot of soups. So um, today, uh, tonight, probably I'm going to make um, Asian infused chicken chicken soup with like a little bit of coconut and lemongrass and uh, shiitake mushrooms and a few other things. So I'm going to do that for Sarah, who's up visiting her mom. So when she comes home, she'll have. Do you does that ever worry you that you're like a super adult? Uh, I tweeted something like that recently that I get uh, I get a real like feel good sense. When I go out and do errands. Ryan, by the way, is the grown-up part of, <laughs> of the riot. I don't know. If you guys haven't seen him in the podcast, he is the one of us that is an actual, an actual grown-up. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But, but again, like, I just, I, I like being able to, and my grandfather is this way, too, um, where he 
he's well the house that they moved into almost 30 years ago was built by the previous owner but it wasn't done very well and so over the course of the last 28 to 30 well I guess it would be 28 because they moved in just after I was born um, they've been improving stuff in the house and he, he was a um, uh, maintenance guy in the factory and he's really good at uh, teaching himself how to, how to do stuff so he's he's set up sensors in the house for the sump pumps and created backup redundancies to in case the power because they live out in the countryside mm -hmm. so in case power ever goes out the water's still good heat's still good like everything's everything's set up and he, he did that just by teaching himself and I like that idea of being self-sufficient not again not in a Thoreau sort of sense of in like an you know, Aristotle sort of or, sense or a Walden sense uh, <laughs> where I, I don't want to live out on, on, a, on off the land in a, in a log cabin that I built myself but in in the modern day if my computer breaks I'll be able to fix it if uh, if I wanted to put together furniture that wasn't Ikea snapped together and I had to hack it or hack it in the uh, adapted sort of way not like hacksaw hack it you know, I could do those kinds of things. And I like the idea of hacking culture in less of the computer sense, but more of the traditional of just tinkering and repurposing something that yeah. may not have had Turn, that Turning stuff into stuff that works for you. Yeah, and that's that's something I'm just starting to like tip my toe or dip my toe into the pond of, of well, learning how to do it. Well, in the right place. I am. I just need to make enough money to, to pay for the membership fee so I can contribute to the to the community. Yep. Well, and that's part of it, is it too, is we do a lot of social stuff, we do a lot of hangout stuff, because no. it's not just a workshop that you rent for X amount of dollars a month, it's a community that you're part of, mm -hmm. and that you, I mean, that you take an active participation in, and that is a really important part about, I don't know, I don't know about other hacker spaces, because I don't know a lot about them, there are definitely some course I have experts who could talk about that, mm -hmm. but uh, certainly it's, it's an important part here. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you can see more of Huck on the podcast and in other videos. Uh, I will see you guys on Thursday with more video games, probably. And uh, you can listen to the podcast and hear Huck once again brag about um, his grandpa's house. Yeah. And uh, specifically his son Paul. Okay, well, I don't hate snowballs, and I don't hate snowmen, and I don't hate tobogganing. What I hate is that moment when you step onto your driveway... And you get halfway down, and then you slip, you break your ass, and you slide down to the sidewalk like some kind of human luge.